Good. That was funny. Good evening, yeah. everybody, and welcome to the podcast MOV with Rick and Bob, the heartbeat of the Mid-Isle Valley. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your host, Bob Mercer. With me, as always, is my co-host and very best friend, Mr. Rick Sawyer, out there in beautiful downtown Murphy. Now, what's up, sir? Good afternoon, Bob. All quiet on the Western Front. Awesome. We're waiting now on um, Aaron Fleener, our guest for tonight. Um, as soon as he gets on here, we will we will start with him. Um, and let me text him here real quick. So anyway, tonight, like I said, we're going to have Aaron Fleener, public information officer with Woodwork County 911. But we just have a few things that we want to we want to take care of first. First off, thank you everybody for your comments throughout the week from last week's show. Uh, Rick and I, Rick and I did our very best to make things go pretty well, and I think they did. I think we had a pretty good, pretty good show last week. So um, I want to start off with something on a serious note here. Um, most of you are aware of the senseless shooting in Uvalde, Texas, involving 19 children and two adult teachers that happened on Tuesday. It was a very sad situation. Um, our hearts and prayers go out to everybody in Uvalde, Texas, uh, including the grandmother who of the um, perpetrator who he shot as well. Our thoughts and prayers go out to them, and we want them to know that this country stands with them, and we are everybody saddened by what, what went on out there. Um, it's been all over the place. All I can say is don't pass judgment until the final until the final reports out. I mean, there's just things bouncing everywhere all over the place. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, what's what's going to come of it, but just don't pass judgment until we see the final the final report on this. Um, also tomorrow, as everybody knows, is um, Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a day set aside to honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and the freedom of this great country we live in. Uh, so tomorrow, just um, if you see if there's a um, if there's this thing going on somewhere that you could close to, go out and honor those, like I said, who gave the ultimate sacrifice for your freedoms, for you to be able to do the things that we're doing today. Um, and Rick, do you have anything you want to add to that or the um, Texas? No, I just uh, also want to uh, shout out to all the veterans. Uh, thank you for your service. Okay, I think there's a I think there's something going on tomorrow at the city park. Um, I'm sure I'm going to be there. A lot of you who have seen the um, council agenda for last week knows that we are going to name a piece of road there in front of the um, the monuments for the veterans and so that will be taken care of tomorrow um, the mayor issued a pro uh, proclamation a resolution so to speak which was unanimously passed by council last week so this is just our way of um, honoring all those who have committed their lives to this great country by serving and uh, so try to be there tomorrow. I believe it's somebody said it was 10 o'clock. I've been having trouble finding out if that's, you know, the exact time. But I think it's like 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So just be over there and have a great time. Thank those who are there. Again, it is for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. But we're going to have veterans over there and people who are, I'm sure, still active. And just thank them. Thank them very much for what they do for this great country and for for protecting our freedoms and our rights. And we hope that uh, you know we hope that everybody's okay. So that's all I need to say about that because I don't want to dwell too much on the negative with the Texas shooting, but that was a pretty sad situation. So, um, like I said, I'm not sure where Aaron's at right now. He was in waiting. And I think that we may have to go get him. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But anyway, we're going to move ahead here just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and wait for give him some more time.
but we're going to um, a segment that we call Mark Your Calendar. And this is just things that we have been told about that are coming up in the, this week. And we're, we're running up until next Sunday. That way, next Sunday, we can, we can uh, go on to the following week. So just bear with us here a second. Because what we have now is um, the Southwood Pool and Water Slides, City Park Pool and Splash Pad will open weekends. This is going to be May 29th through September 6th. Weekdays, June 8th through June 18th, Monday through Saturday, 12 noon to 6 p.m., Sunday 1 to 5 p.m. So take your kids over, let them enjoy the Splash Pad, let them enjoy Southwood Pool. Southwood Pool is going to be completely redone after this year, so it's going to be fantastic once we get once we get things moving over there. Um, I believe we talked about that once before on the last uh, couple sessions ago. So uh, let's see, Vacation Bible School is gonna be June 8th and 9th and 10th from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Broadway Church of the Nazarene on Broadway Avenue. Um, it says this is gonna be an amazing ocean themed Vacation Bible School with family movie night on Saturday, June 11th. Exploring the depth of Jesus' love with snacks, games, and crafts each evening. So, if you want to be involved in that, go over, have a great time, a little fellowship there. Um, a lot of activities going on on Saturday, June the 4th, coming up next weekend. The PHS Big Bang Car Wash fundraiser will be at O'Reilly's in Vienna from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Go over and support these kids. Um, they, they do a great job, and they, they need all the money they can get. Trust me, my granddaughters are in it, and that's some expensive stuff. So, also, Eastwood Volunteer Fire Department Ice Cream Socials coming up at the fire station on Route 47. Taste of Parkersburg will be at Bicentennial Park, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Again, at the uh, Bicentennial Park. Come on down, enjoy the foods and drinks of the city of Parkersburg. Have a great time. I go to it. I didn't get to go to it last year. I believe I was working, but I'm going to it this year. I'm going to have a great, great time there. And something my, something we ran across, and I'm not exactly sure what all is going on with this, but this is um, a voice for the voiceless animal rescue team. They're going to be at the Barlow Fairgrounds on uh, June Saturday, June 4th. Um, as soon as somebody else, if somebody's listening from that organization, just text us. And let us know. Um, I just got a message from Jerry Wilson. The Deer Walk Ice Cream Social will be June 11th. So go on out there to that and enjoy them as well. They always have great time. I love ice cream social time. It's just they have the very best time. They have a lot of people go out and support these volunteers. And I think it's well worth it to go out and enjoy some ice cream, listen to some good music, play some games, get involved in some raffles. Thank you, Jerry, very much for that. I, I appreciate that very, very much. You doing that for us. Um, the West Virginia Central Credit Union, I'm not exactly sure again what this is all about, but they're going to have a, um, they're having a raffle up until October. And it's going to be uh, to support the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that is a, um, everybody knows is an organization that helps children with terminal illness you know, with their, with a very special wish that they would like to see. And uh, you're welcome, Jerry. And uh, so go out and take part in a lot of these things. Get involved in the city. The city has a bunch of these going on. So, again, I'm not sure where Aaron's at. Um, but he should be with us momentarily. So Rick, how you been out there? Pretty cool. Everything yeah, well? been been. I love this. I love this place out here. The little I live on is just a half a mile long, and uh, the only traffic on here is the people that live here and the people that go to church. Little church down on the end of the corner, the uh, little Baptist church down there. Other than that, there's no traffic at all. It's nice and quiet, and uh, the neighbors, the neighbors out here are wonderful. It's just like a one big family. I just love it here. That's good. That's good. I like it. I like going out to sit, and Scooby likes it out there too. So. <laughs> hey, um, Rick, I'm going to send you a number. If you can, you make a phone. Uh, 
I'm not sure what's holding Aaron up. He was on weight, so I'm not sure. Let me text him real quick here. Bear with me. I apologize. Well, while we're waiting for that, why don't we go ahead and uh, talk about our trivia challenge? Yeah, last week, Bob asked us, uh, <clears throat> there's a bullet hole in the stained glass window on the third floor of the courthouse, and how to get there? Nobody had an answer. Well, let me tell you what I was told again. I was told that there was a, that used to be the um, Judge Black courtroom, and evidently there was a, somebody must have brought something in or something. There was a weapon discharged there. And the bullet went through the glass and it was never replaced. So that's the answer to that. It's kind of a tough one, but one of the, um, my friend John Reed told me a little bit of trivia right there. And uh, it's good to see you too, Jerry. Appreciate you, man. So this week's trivia question is going to be a little different. Before Parkersburg, West Virginia became Parkersburg, West Virginia, in 1811, I believe it was. It was Parkersburg, Virginia. What was the name? What was what was Parkersburg known by? Send it out to us again under comments at thebobcast.net. Give us your answer, and we will uh, we'll announce it next week on the podcast. And then in a couple of weeks after that, we're going to announce a winner. Um, I believe we're going to go with a coffee mug this time. What do you think, Rick? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. The first, our, our first, our first prize will be a nice coffee mug with a logo on it. Okay, that'd be great. So if you can look it up, it's real easy to Google. Um, look it up. Send us your comments on it. We'll announce the winner next week, and we'll go from there. So. Okay, Rick, um, Aaron's telling me that he hit the join button and it says waiting on host. Is there something we need to do on our end? We didn't have to before, did we? No, I have no idea what's going on with that. I really don't. There's there's nothing here for me to click on to invite, to re-invite him. Hmm. Jerry Wilson tells me he's not too far from you, Rick. Yeah, uh, he's just uh, just on the other side of 50 from me, about the same distance uh, from 50 as I am. He's on the north end, I'm on the south end. Really? Cool. All right, Aaron's going to try it again. He's going to back out and try it again and see where we're at with this. And then when he pops back on, we'll get him started. He has a very important job at 911. He's been a dispatcher I know of for 30 years. And he has a very important job as public information officer. And when he gets on here, I'll let him, um, I will let him explain to you what his duties are. And basically just talk about why we do the things we do at 911. We get a lot of, we get a lot of wires. You, why are you doing this? And why are you asking this? And what's going on there? Jerry's on Stillwell now. So oh. we're going to, we're going to have him explain to us why we do some of the things we do at 911 why it's very important that we that we do these things and you know he'll also explain and i'll, I'll just you know why we are uh, why we are getting all this information it does not it does not slow down the dispatch time somebody else is already dispatching it from another area so um, you know that's one thing we need to we need to bring up to everybody and let them know that, 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 you know, while we're getting all this information, that it's not, it's not delaying dispatch to your call. So, but anyway, all right, Rick, while we're waiting on Aaron, we might as well go ahead and do the pet of the week. I think that, uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good, pretty good segment that we, that we're, that we started doing the other day. And I'd like for you all to meet Miss Bella up in our corner there, if you can see her. Miss Bella is a two-year-old domestic short hair, and she spayed and vetted and ready for adoption. She lives in the community room, I guess, which is a room where the, they take a lot of the cats, and they can uh, socialize and 
and just be out instead of being out being in a crate they're in the community room which they built i guess here recently so um she's in the uh, community room at the humane society i was told she's a little bit nervous that she's super super lovable once she gets to know she can trust you evidently baby girl has a trust issue and once you get past that then uh, you're going to have your forever baby right there and she's beautiful so last week's pet chestnut is a beautiful gray and black tabby not been adopted still available one of the longest cats staying at the Humane Society today. So go take a look at Chestnut and go pick him up, love him, and take him home. Give him a forever home so he doesn't be stuck here at the Humane Society all the time. So but we're going to do that once a week. Next week, I believe we're going to have a dog and uh, we're going to do that. So we shall see what happens. And the next segment's supposed to be, if you were a city councilman, what laws would you make and why? Again, we've not had anything said about that, but I want to say something in that general vicinity of city council. A lot of people believe that city council is responsible for everything that happens in, in this city, and we're not. Um, we just, we're, people are talking today about transformers blowing and the city the city council does nothing about it the city council has no no say in that stuff that's all done by a uh, electric company who, that, in, in the area and they're the ones that uh, need to be contacted city council has nothing to do with these buildings being torn down because these are private buildings that are are owned by other people the city council doesn't have a say in it so I just kind of wanted to let everybody know that city council does not have total rule over everything, so to speak. We do make the laws in the city and we are responsible for the budget. But when there's something that goes on and if it's on a state highway, if it's on a state route, city, city council and city of Parkerburg has nothing to do with it. And I probably shouldn't let something like that bother me as long as I've been on council. But every once in a while, just something happens that you're just thinking, I don't know why people think that. You know, I'm a citizen, elected by citizens to represent citizens. That's my job. Whether for my district over in Southside or for the entire city of Parkersburg, my job is to represent the people in the city of Parkersburg and do what I think and what city council believes to be the right thing to do. So... You know, if, if you have issues, you know, come to the meetings. We have a public forum. You can talk to us about it. And we'd be glad, you know, after the meeting to stand and talk to you and, you know, talk about whatever the issue is going on. Or if you don't want to come to the meeting, reach out to your council person. Speak to them. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what you're thinking. Every, every single person on that council and every single person in the city of Parkersburg administration is there because... Not because we're going to get rich, I promise you that much. Because we care about what happens in the city of Parkersburg, and we want to try to work with everybody to make it better. So, you know, if, if you got something like that to happen, to make sure you know what what's really going on before you lay the blame. And I'll probably catch all kinds of flack for this, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm used to it, and I, it's, it's just the way it is. So you just need to just... You know, we're, we are here to help the city of Parkersburg. Another thing that I, yeah, another thing that I've noticed, Bob, is that a lot of people don't know the difference between city council and county commission. And uh, folks living outside of the of the city um, blame the city council for stuff that goes on outside of city limits. And, of course, you, you guys don't have anything to do with that. And a lot, even a lot of people who live inside of the city just don't know the difference between the city council and the county commission. Two entirely different, uh, two entirely different functions. Exactly, and I've seen that a lot of times. And, and and some people, you know, you try to tell them that, hey, you know, that's in the county. That has nothing to do with the city of Parkersburg. And I'm like, whatever, you know. It, it, and if something happens that 
that we have no control over, it's just hard to explain to people that, you know, we, we don't have any say in what happens there. Um, Aaron's having issues getting on. He says it's still waiting on the host. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, Rick? Yeah, I've, we've got no way to bring him in from here, so we'll just have to get him another time, I guess. Okay, well, we can do that's that. Very, that's, that's very, very unfortunate, very distressing. Well, I don't understand what's going on. Everybody else just hit the button and popped right in on the on the show, and I'm so I'm not sure exactly what went on there. But we'll try. I guess we'll try to have Aaron on at a different time, just a different day. So, but you know, we're going to continue on with the show as much as we can here. So, even Scott, how are you doing, sir? We're doing fine. Scott Hecker talking to us here Ricker. Rick's Rick's frozen there's gonna be a wow there's gonna be some uh, technical issues tonight which is unfortunate I don't know what the deal is uh, okay well Rick will be back in in a minute as soon as he can read as soon as he can uh, are you back, Rick? Wow. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't understand what's going on anymore. The no podcast, gre the podcast gremlins are really active today. Well, we're gonna have to find somebody that can come in and fine tune some of this stuff because I'm really not sure what's happening and why. Why a lot of this stuff happens? You just froze up there for a couple seconds, and then evidently went back out and came back in. So. Let me get with Aaron here. I'm not sure. Maybe it's something with his phone or something with if he's on a computer or what it is. But uh, anyway. So Don't I'm not know. sure. We'll just have to try again. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, he's he's very, him and I are on the PR committee. We go to, um, we didn't get to the last couple of years because of COVID, but I, hopefully they'll bring it back. We're on the public relations committee. We go into schools, talk to the kids, explain to them what 911 does and ask questions about that. Um, we're right now, and I wanted Aaron to bring this up. We're right now, you know, constantly needing people. So get on the uh, Wood County 911 website and uh, download the application, fill it out, turn it in uh, and go from there because we, we definitely need people. And uh, so that's a big thing for us is trying to keep people. I think, I'm not sure how many we are down, but Everybody up there at 911, I'm going to tell you straight up, I mean, I've been there 16 years, and they're, they are very professional people. Um, they're working very hard a lot of times, and there's just a lot going on, especially here recently with the things that have been going on in the city. Um, it's just a lot happening in these people, and I'm going to say myself included. And we have been really working hard to, you know, do the very best that we can to um, keep – keep our officers safe, keep people informed on what's going on. So, um, let me see here real quick. I apologize for keeping doing this. Aaron said, okay, we'll do this again. So another day, I apologize to everybody for that. Um, but due to technical issues beyond our control, I'm not sure if we, you know, what's going on, whose end it's on, but we will, uh, we'll get Aaron in here as soon as we can. And hopefully, in the way it looks now, we're, we're definitely having Mike Piper, Chief of the Vienna Police Department, on next Sunday night at our regular time at 6 o'clock. And uh, then we're going to have, hopefully, I, if I can get a hold of um, Chief Graham Tuesday, we're going to have Chief Graham from Williamstown on and just have a, long, have a chat with them. Hopefully, we don't have any issues, uh, technical issues, because it's kind of embarrassing and it's kind of frustrating for us because... Everything's worked fine all week long. We've been tested and everything's working fine. And on the day of broadcast, it's like 
something always goes wrong. I'm not sure why why that is. So I'm sure we're going to have a very shortened version of it tonight. We were hoping to have Aaron on for the entire hour, but it will probably just be a 30-minute um, talk show podcast and talk about the things that we were talking about. But again, go on there, answer the trivia question of the day. What was Parkersburg's name before it became Parkersburg? Um, and then let us know. And uh, then we will we will go from there. Let me see something here real quick. So, Rick, do you have anything you want to say, sir? No, sir. I just uh, I don't have any idea what's going on, why we're having all these technical difficulties tonight. I know that I was having some uh, internet connection problems earlier in the afternoon. My mm-hmm. uh, internet speed was just jumping all over the place. I know that uh, suddenly they're in transition now. They're going. Uh, they're rebranding themselves. Been out. Been bought out by another company, and they're working on their uh, working on their internet service lines and everything. They told us there would be some outages, but they didn't tell us it would be like this. I don't know that this is Sudden Link's problem. Um, I don't. I just don't know what's happening. But we'll work really hard to try to get things resolved before next week. I wonder if it's. Um, I wonder if it may be his internet or where. I'm not sure where he's at. I know he lives out on Route 50, but I'm not sure where he's at. But anyway, um, Scott Hackett's on. I didn't know if you've seen that, Rick. But Scott's on. Even Scott, glad you could come aboard. Sorry for the issues that we're having. Always appreciate you being there, sir. But we're going to work on this. Scott brought his. Um, for those of you who don't know, Scott brought his family body um, on river restaurant and he brought it up the other day and uh, it's sitting being re- ready to ready to open up as soon as they can get it done so we're all looking forward to that and scott even he even told me we could do a uh, a live remote from the from the deck of the of the ship so hopefully we can work on that and get that taken care of we wish scott good luck um, with the restaurant looking forward to what he's going to do so, Rick, I'm not sure where else we can go. I pretty much we, we had a we, we had a schedule, you know, for the entire hour because we were going to have Aaron on for a good 45 minutes, uh, just explain it to him. But we will uh, we'll definitely take care of the technical issues and have Aaron back on as quick as we can. I mean, if nothing else, we can do it the following week. Uh, but we're going to have different. We're going to have a lot of people on. There's some people that I want to talk to. Just people that you may see them and you may not, but you may not know who they are. You, but you see them every day out doing something, and we're, we're going to reach out to these people and bring them on and ask them to, uh, you know, just to talk about what they're doing and introduce themselves. I know one in particular I want to get, and I will talk to him just as soon as I can get with him. So, all right, Rick. Well, I'm. I hate this because I was really hoping to do a lot longer show today than we did. But um, I just, you know, want to thank Aaron for trying. You know, he he was really really excited about being, you know, being on the show. Um, and again, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out and you know say, you know, what a great job we did on some shows in the past. And that means a lot that kind of that kind of helps me out with the uh, being frustrated with what's going on right now because we sh- it should have already been handled but like I said Rick and I are Rick and I are all over this all week long we're constantly back and forth on this thing with each other making sure that everything the audio level the video level and everything's where it's supposed to be and we've not had not one issue at all this week and now here it is, the day, uh, day of the uh, show. And guess what? I know. I know what the problem is, Bob. Have you uh, been watching? Have you been watching the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch on the History Channel? Uh, they've got a they've got a bunch of scientists out there trying to figure out why there's so much UFO phenomena and supernatural phenomena ha- happening on this ranch in the upper uh, northeastern corner of the state of Utah. They've got a team of scientists out there that are just doing everything they can. And every time they bring in a bunch of experts, suddenly none of their equipment works. That's what the problem is. 
we got the skinwalkers oh. attacking you. That's got to be oh. it. <laughs> I see. Well, we'll leave it at that because, you know, by golly, that works for me. I mean, it it takes me out. It takes us out of the hot seat, I think, Rick. That's right. It's not my fault. You know, <laughs> if we can blame it on something like that, by golly. So anyway, um, don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook. We don't have Twitter anymore, right, Rick? Yes. So which, yeah, we're streaming, streaming on Twitter as well. All right, but you took down the blog, right? Yeah, I took the blog down. Okay. All right, we no longer have the blog because of so much going on. We're it, it became you know hard to try to keep up with everything. So just message us whenever you can on um, either our uh, Bobcast emails or our personal emails, and let us know what you think. And let us know, please send us stuff and let us know what's happening in the Middle High Valley, whether it be a birth date you want, whether it be you know an event that's going on. Uh, I had a lot of them sent to me today. I mean, they were just like massive amount. So, um, and I got them on as best I could. So we have a lot going on. But once again, you know, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for all of your comments and just being with us. Stay with us. As I know it's difficult because we're having we're having issues, and it doesn't seem like it's a whole lot professional. But we're trying the very best we can. We love what we're doing, and we want to do this not for us because we're not doing it we're not making anything off of it i promise you but we want to make sure people understand what's going on in the meta high valley make it you know make it a good place to live in stick with the positive things that are happening in our great city instead of the negative instead of sitting around trying to think of something negative sit around and think of positive things that are going on and we'll bring it here we'll bring it here to you on the bobcast mov with rick and bob and once again thank you all very very much for those who are here and thank you again to Aaron for attempting to come on. We'll Rick and I'll get with you to find out exactly what went wrong on your end and our end. And we will, we will get you back on here because what you have to say is definitely important. So always remember those of you looking down, never see the rainbows or silver linings. So just keep looking up and from the Bobcast, we want to say good night. Again, prayers for Uvalde, Texas, and those who uh, suffered a great loss this week. Um, and we will talk to you all soon. Have a Thanks. very good Sunday. Rick, I'll call you, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Bye, buddy. Bye.